What's up guys, my name's Luke and welcome back to Motion and Design. So I've been a bit busy recently, I've been working on a bunch of shoe content. And so yeah, I did a bunch of R&D for the shoe commercial that I was working on and some of it didn't make it through so I thought I'd just do some tutorials on how I did some of this R&D. So I thought some of it came out really cool and seeing as though it's not going to see the light of day, I thought I'd make some tutorials on it. So this isn't the shoe that we're actually, that I did the commercial with, but this is one of my shoes and I'm doing it with this so that I can give you guys the project files. Uh, so yeah, if you're wanting to follow along with this project, you're more than welcome to download this off Patreon. But if you don't have that, uh, if you don't want to get that off Patreon, that's perfectly fine. The technique that we're going to use is we'll work with kind of any object. So yeah, get your object and yeah, we can get started. But before we start, if you're interested in this type of content, please consider liking and subscribing. And yeah, I mean, if you want to get project files and some tutorials, my Patreon is in the link in the description. It really does help a lot and supports the channel. Uh, but yeah, if not, a like and subscribe does go a long way. But yeah, let's get straight into this. So this over here is what we're going to be creating today. It's a really cool look of the shoe with like particles coming off from the shoe. and. It's kind of hard to see it in this one, but what we're doing is that we're taking the texture of the shoe and we're moving the particles away from it with the texture. So if you have a shoe with a really nice, like unique texture, the particles will come off like that. So yeah, it's really cool. But for now, let's set up the particles. So I've got a basic scene set up over here. I have a shoe model over here, and then I also have a low res version of the shoe model. I really recommend using a low res one just so that you can actually use the scene and then once we're done with it we can always just hide it and use the high poly version. But for now we're just going to use this low poly version. Cool, so let's start out by grabbing a XP system. Inside of our XP system let's go into our object, change this from image shape from rectangle to object, let's drag our shoe in there and then change the image from polygon to texture. Then you'll see that we get a new tab over here called texture and now we can drag in our texture into the texture tag. So just one thing, I have two materials over here. I have my redshift material. Uh, just, just quickly, you can follow along with using redshift to obtain or just stand render up. Everything is pretty much the same, uh, just so you know. Uh, but yeah, make sure that you have just a standard render texture so just copy the texture file into that because you'll notice that if we go to our experiment if we have a redshift uh, object you can put it in but it won't show and so now when you press play we have a bunch of particles shooting off and you'll notice that it's the color of the shoe which is exactly what we want cool so let's hide the shoe for now let's go into our mission and let's just turn this down to something like 0.5 and it's increased the birth rate to about 10,000. You don't need to uh, decrease the radius so much, um, but I'll show you why I'm doing that. So let's go over here to modifiers. Uh, so what we're wanting to do is that we want these particles to stick to the shoe. So we can do that by grabbing a XP follow surface. XP follow surface over here. Let's grab our model. And now when you press play, uh, oh, sorry, that's in the fields, go to the object tab drag it into the objects over here and now look it's going around the shoe the reason that we're using 8.5 radius is that now you'll see that it's sticking really nicely to the uh, shoe over here but if we have to set this to let's take this back to three you'll see that now it's kind of a gap between the shoe and the particles which isn't what we want we want it to be like a really smooth transition so that's what we're going to do with this 0.5 cool so we can hide the shoe again so we wanted that it sticks on the shoe, but at a certain point, the particles start to fly off. So we can do that pretty simply by going over here into fields and then just adding in a linear field. Let's make it quite small. Something like that should be good. I only want the end over here to, for it to go flying off. And that's press play. Cool, it's facing the wrong way. So let's just change the direction. And awesome. Now we have our shoe and everything past this point, the particles go flying off. Cool, so let's go and grab some XP wind. Drag this over here, point in the direction that you want it to go. And I used a pretty strong wind speed. So I'm gonna use 1000 over here. 
can also just drag this a little bit further back. And now look, the particles are all flying off to the side, which is exactly what we want. But it's kind of flying just to the left, and I wanted it to fly to like a specific point. So how I did that was just by adding a XP attractor. Let's rotate our attractor. And let's just bring this further back over here. So like that should be good. And now I'm press play. Now they're flowing to a singular point and it looks really cool. And you can kind of see with, let me just turn on my model over here, that this tick, the particles or like the white particles are kind of following along with the tick. So you can see what I mean by if you have a um, shoe or an object with some unique colors that the colors will flow with the object. So you can get some really cool results from this. Unfortunately, the shoe that I'm using is just boring black and white. Maybe I need to buy myself more shoes, but this is about the only nice shoe that I have. Maybe I should invest in more shoes. Um, but yeah, I thought this looked quite cool. Um, but yeah, this does look nice, but we want some more. So we can make a little bit more advanced looking by going over here to XP Turbulence. And so if we actually press play, we get a little bit of variation, but it's still pretty much the same. Uh, but I found that if we used a curl noise, we can get some really cool results. Look at that. It's really cool, but now it's super slow and doesn't really give us the result we're looking for. But we can change that. Let's change the scale to about 50. And then let's go over here to the blend, make this 50, and add of 10. And now, look at that. We get this really cool, advanced looking particles over here. They give this like really nice, like wavy look to it. The curl noise inside this turbulence is just, it's so cool. Cool, so now if we had to show our shoe, this does look cool, but the only problem is that when it comes to rendering this, we're gonna have a bunch of particles over here and that's just not gonna look that nice. I mean, this over here is meant to be a product shot and when you're doing a product shot, you kind of wanna show off your product. You can't really have it that these particles are distracting you from the actual product. So we want it that the particles over here, they don't show, but when they get here, then they show. So we can do that pretty simply by going over here and adding an XP scale. So if we had to just leave it as is, you'll notice that nothing changes. It is changing, but we're not able to see it. So let's go over here into display and change our display from squares to spheres. And now look, cool. Now we're getting a bunch of spheres. They start off small and then they grow. This is a cool look, but definitely not what we're trying to go for. So let's go into our XP scale over here and change the operation from change value to set by fall off. Let's go over here and add in a linear field. Let's just make this a little bit smaller. And now let's see. Okay, it's facing the wrong way again. And now look, it starts off small and then gets bigger, which is exactly what we want. So for my render, luckily because it was like a black and white shoe, you didn't really notice these particles over here. But if you really don't want to see them, we can go over here and add in the XP kill. Just make this like 100 by 100 by 100. Something small like that. And let's just put it over here in the front. So it just covers the shoe. And let's change this to inside bounds. And now look, those particles will not appear. And we get this really nice smooth fall off over here. So if we had to show our shoe now, nothing will show over here. But as it starts going over here, then we'll see a lot more particles. Isn't that super cool? Awesome. So that is the gist of the actual technical side of this. Let's do some lighting and just let me show you how to basically texture this. Cool. So with our emitter over here, let's right click and go and add a RS object tag. If you're using Octane, same thing, just add a Octane tag. And in the object tab, let's change this to optimize spheres. And if you're using Octane, just throw in a sphere over there. Cool. Let's see what this looks like. Nice. We're getting a bunch of particles, but there's not that many. We want a lot more. So let's go over here and add an extra zero here. 
Um, I would recommend caching, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to cache just to kind of save time. But yeah, when you guys are doing this, I'd highly recommend caching and even maybe adding even more particles. Cool, I'm just going to stop it over there. So just one other thing, because of the scene over here, the particles are going to kind of flow forever. And we don't really need to do that, especially when it comes to caching, it's going to make the scene size really big. So what we can do is we can go over here, turn off the full lifespan and this changes to something about 50. I think that by frame 50, these particles be over here and then they'll start removing themselves, which is what we want because we don't really need the particles to kind of go all the way in the background because you're not going to see them. So why waste the space? Um, but yeah, let's just let this go just a little bit more. Cool. And let's see. Yeah, that looks a lot cooler. Let's go and add a red shift material. Let's drag this on here. And let's go and search user, color user data. Let's just plug that into there and change this from part, uh, to particle and then particle color. And cool, now we're getting the exact color of the particles over here, which is exactly what we want. Cool, now let's go and light the scene. Let's grab a plane. Let's rotate it. And we just turn it off for now. Make this minus 19. And let's make this a little bit bigger. You can always do this in post if you want to, but I'm just going to do it in the scene. Kind of save some time, especially because all I'm going to be doing is just adding a basic gradient. Let's go and add a material to this. And let's just use a basic wrap. Plug that into the color. Let's go over here and let's turn off the roughness. Oh, sorry, turn up the roughness. We don't really want it to be reflective. Cool. Let's see how that's looking. I want it to be diagonal. So let's go to our ramp, change it from vertical to diagonal, and let's swap these around. Actually, I think that's fine. Something like that. So it goes from white to dark. It also emphasizes the particles a little bit more. Yeah, something like that should be fine. Cool. So let's go and light this now. Let's just lock our camera over here. Let's add some lights. Let's go and add area lights. Actually, I'm going to turn off the particles for now so I can actually work in real time. Cool, so this is just going to be our rim light over here. We want it to be kind of big. So we want it to just highlight the edge of the shoe. Let's go and turn down our intensity by a bit. Maybe just rotate it a little bit just so it catches a little bit more over there. Cool, I think that's good for now. Let's go and add another light. And let's put this in the front of the shoe. This is... I actually think that looks fine. I didn't mean to bring down the intensity that much, but it works for what we're trying to do. I think that looks good. And then let's just add another one at the back here. But I am going to make it face this way so that it also lights up particles. I think something like that was quite nice. Cool, so that's doing all the white bits of the shoe. I wanna add just some color to it, seeing as though it is a white and black shoe. I thought it could be quite nice to just add some orange to it. So let's go over here, go into our color, and let's choose a nice orangey color. Bring this forward. Actually, uh, I can still use this one. I think something like that looks nice. It's a nice little orange coming from the front. And then I just want to add a little bit more orange back over here. So let's bring our light. We can just duplicate it. Let's bring it at the back over here. Swap these around. 
I think something like that looks very nice. Let's see how it looks with some particles. Yeah, that's looking really nice. So I think what we can do is let's go into our ramp over here. Which one was our ramp? Was this one? Let's go and bump this into our emission texture. Let's just turn up the emission to about one. Something like that. And let's just maybe move this over just a bit. Just so that we have a little more. Oh, why am I moving? That's the wrong thing. I think something like that works. So just let's add a tiny bit more spice to this. Let's go and add one more light. And we're just going to make this a streak, kind of focusing in on our little logo over there. So maybe we just pause this. Bring this slide back. Turn this round. We're going to make this quite narrow and quite long. And then inside of our shape over here, let's turn down the spread really low. And let's see how that's looking. Cool. And then let's rotate this to go along our tick. Things something like that looks nice. Let's just make it a little bit more map narrow. I think something like that. And then let's just make it a lot longer. We don't want to shine on the background over here. So let's go into our project over here and remove, exclude our plane. Cool. And let's see how that looks with some particles. Nice. I'm going to take the same color that I used over here and paste it in here. Let's just bring down this intensity by a bit. Nice. And look at that. We recreated the shot. Really cool, really simple, really easy. It gives us this really cool result over here. Uh, so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you're interested in the project files, it will be up on my Patreon. And I've got a bunch of other stuff coming up soon. I've got this uh, little tennis short film that I did. Um, hopefully I'm going to be doing that next week. Uh, at least that's the plan. Um, if all goes well, hopefully that will be released next week. But yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.